Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and in this video we're going to be talking about this really strange star system known as Beta Pictoris. And a study that just discovered something even stranger inside of this star system. Let's discuss this new discovery and welcome to What The Math. So as you can probably tell from the title, we discovered an extremely massive and extremely large planet in the middle of this star system. But it's not the first such planet. This is actually a planet we saw previously back in 2011 and this was one of the first planets to be directly imaged by various telescopes. In other words, this planet is so huge and so large that if you were to look at this star system with a typical telescope, even an amateur telescope, you would be able to kind of sort of see the planet right there, which is something that one of the amateur astronomers did back in 2011. And although discovering these types of planets is no longer a big deal because we know that there are a lot of super Jupiters out there, finding such a planet relatively close to our star system at a distance of just over 60 light years away from us is a big deal because it means that this second planet was always there, we just didn't really know where to look. Now this video right here shows you the original planet that we knew about for practically a decade now and as you can see it's actually really easily visible without even looking at the star itself. But what's super cool about the system is that the mass of this planet is so extremely large that it's capable of completely reshaping the whole star system throwing off quite a lot of materials into the outer space. In other words, as this planet orbits around its parent star, it's capable of literally causing quite a lot of different collisions around the star system, but also both the star and the planet are responsible for ejecting a lot of materials. And what's really unusual is that today a lot of scientists believe that a vast majority of interstellar dust and particles that literally land on our planet Earth are most likely from the star system. They actually come from the debris disk that you see right here. This is actually sort of like from a side view. So in a sense, imagine if this is the star right there in the middle, we're looking at the star from this angle here. So we're looking at the actual side of the disk. And because of this, a lot of the materials that are coming from the disk have a chance to intersect with our solar system and basically fall onto planet Earth. So we're kind of witnessing the birth of a very young, very new star system where a very, very massive body is responsible for reshaping everything, for throwing things out, but at the same time, what we just discovered actually makes this system even more interesting because as we're looking at the star system, apart from seeing things like various debris, various potential comets and uh, possible collisions, we also witness that, well, it seems that there is another planet after all. And not just any kind of a planet, another really massive planet, possibly even more massive than the previous one. In other words, as the scientists were looking at the exocomets and studying various patterns in the star system, they realized that something else, most likely another planet that they refer to as Beta Pictoris C now, with an approximate mass of about 9 masses of Jupiter, is causing even more disturbance and causing a lot more orbital shifts that are not really explainable in any other way. Now unfortunately we can't really see that planet though because it's a lot closer to the parent star than this one. Uh, the distance is about three times closer so it's very difficult for us to see planetary orbit because it would be actually inside of this circle um, that's blocking the starlight. But all of the evidence reported in this paper suggests that the planet is definitely there and it means that this particular star system just got weirder. It now has two really massive planets that are sort of difficult to explain. So this right here is the first object that we've discovered a few years ago. This is the planet B. And planet C is even more massive but a lot closer and orbits in just the right spot for this to be in the habitable zone of the star system. Now first of all this is actually a super Jupiter meaning that it's a planet that's more massive than Jupiter but not as massive as a brown dwarf. The main difference between this and a typical brown dwarf that you can see right here is that a brown dwarf is usually a type of an object that can start fusing what's known as deuterium inside of the uh, planet. So basically it starts fusing things, it becomes really hot, but it's not really massive enough to initiate a nuclear reaction and start producing heat from hydrogen. So basically it's not a star yet. But this would be a typical um, brown dwarf. 
And this usually can be anywhere from 1500 degrees Celsius up to about a few thousand degrees Celsius. Then we have objects like Jupiter, which is basically a gas giant. And then we have something in between them. And this in between, uh, as of today, is known as Super Jupiter. So this is a planet that's more massive than Jupiter. And in this case, it's about nine times as massive. And it does have a lot of heat already. It actually has so much heat that you can see it visually if you have a telescope. And this is what this object might look like if we were to simulate this in Space Engine. So basically, a gas giant-like object with very similar features to a typical gas giant, but obviously um, also relatively bright and producing heat, a lot of heat. You could technically have a moon around this object and it would maybe even receive enough heat to have liquid water on the surface. But even though it might not produce enough heat by itself, because Beta Pictoris C is literally in the middle of the habitable zone of the parent star system, it suggests to us that if there is a moon here, and let's just place Earth here for fun, it would uh, very likely have good conditions for liquid water and maybe even uh, maintaining the atmosphere. Now, obviously, this is still early to say, and because this is a very, very new star system that's only about 20-something million years old, with the planets roughly being about 5 million years old, it's very likely that none of the terrestrial planets have been created here yet. Or if they have, they're still very young and they're not going to have necessary conditions for forming... Um, either permanent stable atmosphere or liquid water ocean on the surface. And at a distance of roughly around 63 light years away from planet Earth, this also means that this is the closest very large giant next to us. Basically, it's the closest super Jupiter to us right now with the potential to have moons that are reminiscent of moons from Star Wars, such as the moon Endor where Ewoks live. But that's of course maybe in a few billion years from now because right now these planets will be completely barren and very likely super hot as well. Mostly because they're also receiving a lot of collisions and are constantly bombarded by various asteroids and various comets. Officially this planet now has several records. One of them is of course because it's the closest super Jupiter to us, extremely massive planet. Another one is of course that it's a super Jupiter in a habitable zone with potential for having moons that are habitable, but also this planet holds a record for the fastest rotation. Basically, this planet spins faster than any other planet we know. A single day here lasts only 8 hours, and this suggests to us that this planet might have an extremely powerful magnetosphere, but also if it spins a little bit faster, it might start falling apart. But even right now, even though it's not falling apart yet, it's probably somewhat squeezed and looks a little bit more like Another squeezed object that's in our solar system known as Haumea. And this object is also kind of squeezed in, in a sense because it spins so fast. Now today we're not entirely sure uh, what's going to happen to this star system in a few million years from now. It's still very very young and still being developed. But we're kind of curious to see what's going to happen to both of these planets. And more importantly discover how all of this will eventually turn into a star system that's more familiar. That has terrestrial planets, that has gas giants, possibly ice giants. Today we actually have no idea how all of this is going to change. Maybe these two objects will collide with one another. Which we can try to simulate here in Universe Sandbox. And maybe uh, their collision will then produce a lot of various um, fragments that turn into other planets. This is how some scientists believe that um, our planet Earth was born, because we're not entirely sure why our solar system has so many rocky planets but no super Earths. But at the same time, we don't really have any evidence until we see it happening. In this case, I didn't really produce any fragments, so we're gonna try this again, and and so maybe this is a little bit better, but you can see these fragments right here, these little objects that are flying away everywhere, they could technically turn into other planetary objects. So this is something that we'd like to investigate because it will help us understand how star systems form, how planets like Earth form, and then maybe guide us on a way to discover more Earth-like planets out there. For now, that's really all we know about this planet. If you'd like to learn more about the actual discovery, check out the paper in the description below. And also make sure to subscribe because we're going to follow this up with another video about something really similar and it might surprise you as well. Anyway, on that note, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you tomorrow. Come back tomorrow to learn something you may have not known before. Space out and as always, bye bye.